All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking about, well, probably the bane of most dealer techs, and it's coming to the independent world. Of course, I'm talking about, well, R1234YF. If you haven't had to deal with it, well, you're lucky. It sucks. Just to warn you, it sucks. So, if you're unaware, R1234YF is the new refrigerant standard. So I'm going to talk about some of the stuff about it. Well, and we're going to talk about some of the tools that you need to properly diagnose it. So first things first, it is flammable. Understand that it is a flammable refrigerant. Don't, I don't, I'm not going to get into the political stuff of it. It is what it is, we have to deal with it. Obviously, you're gonna need a machine to handle R1234YF. Sucks saying that too, but you're gonna need a machine. And here at the shop, we have a Robin Air machine. It matches our other machines for R134A, but it's a lot different. Once you get into it, you're gonna to have to understand the process is a lot lot slower and the refrigerant is a lot more expensive a lot more expensive I was told this by the Bosch rep that set up the machine and another shop owner told my boss make sure you close the valve on the source tank on the back of the machine if you don't you will lose a lot of expensive refrigerant so just be aware. According to my Eric that works here, one of the machines at a dealership he worked at had signs on them said, make sure and close the source tank, yada, yada, yada. Traditional servicing of AC systems is changing. Gone are the days of, well, charge it and see where the oil leaks out because that's gonna be several hundred dollars if it's a late bottle Tahoe with, you know, two pounds of refrigerant or whatever measuring kilograms, but regardless, I'm just giving it a number. So we're gonna need to figure out some new methods. Now, one of the methods that is highly touted by Bernie Thompson of ATS is CO2 charging. And that's what we've gone with. We have a CO2 tank that we can charge. We got a regulator that's not spec to what we wanted, but it's close enough, 165 to 200 pounds of CO2 in the system, that is enough to turn the compressor on and look for leaks using a CO2 detector of some kind. Now, we haven't bought the CO2 detector as of yet, but we do have another method. And that is from Bernie Thompson, ATS, is this bullseye one-shot leak seeker foam. This detects the CO2 leaking out. Now, I've already used it and I've proved it. I didn't get a picture of it. Well, because you let it sit for a minute, well, it all turns the same color because, you know, CO2 in the air. But when you find a leak, you will see a, like, cone of the foam will be the yellow color of, as opposed to the pink that comes out. So it becomes fairly obvious you have a leak. So that's the method we've been using. Now, some of the things about the machine you have to understand. It has a built-in refrigerant detector, so it's gonna detect what's in the system, so it ain't gonna let you mess around with a system that's contaminated. You've got more filters you have to replace. If you're familiar with Neutronics, it's their system, it's built into the machine, you don't have a choice, it's in there, it won't work without it. And just like the Robin Air machines, you have to change those filters or it will lock you out. Or you have to have a good known number for the filter, which just change the filter. Also, what you're gonna need is one of these guys. A refrigerant leak detector that detects 1234YF. Now, everything else I've been talking about, my boss bought, that OTC sent me a while ago. We're gonna be start putting it to use because one of the things that happens when it starts charging is it wants you to put a compliant sniffer by the bottom vents and sniffer refrigerant. 
it stops and tells you, go look for refrigerant. <clears throat> now, whether or not you do it is obviously up to you, but really, really expensive refrigerant. I mean, that tank is like $600 for 10 pounds. Yeah. And yes, you can add dye, by the way. That is perfectly acceptable. Just add the right kind of dye, i.e. the right kind of oil for the system you're working on. Understand that adding dye to the system, recharging it, and letting it go is gonna be really expensive for, well, the shop and the customer. So that's a bad idea. You need to verify your repairs, verify your leaks, make sure that is the only leaks you have because trust me, comebacks on a one, two, three, four YF systems will get really expensive really fast. But here's the thing, you're gonna have to deal with it. Modern cars are coming with one, two, three, four YF. They just are. So you're gonna need to pick up these tools at some point. Before we got our machine, we've had to turn away service work just because you have to disconnect a refrigerant line to do something. And when we don't have a machine, we can't service it. So sending it to a dealership to do it and bringing it back, pain in the butt. So really important piece of equipment for if you're working on you know anything newer than you know several years old charging for this is going to be expensive i'm not going to get into pricing but it's a long process technicians should be compensated for the long process that is involved and well the shop should be compensated for the vastly expensive refrigerant that we're being forced to use so i hope you like this look at dealing with one two three four yf as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.